Hey y'all, welcome back to Mill and Tater. Today I'm gonna to be showing you four super simple recipes for dinner. These can also be used for lunch, of course. So if you're new to our channel, we'd love to have you subscribe and join our family. Give this video a big thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. So the first thing we're gonna do is a kielbasa hash brown sausage kind of mix in the crock pot. So you're gonna need hash browns. You can use any kind. We just like this one with the onions and peppers. Some milk, one can of cheddar cheese, soup and the kielbasa sausage. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and get everything added to the crock pot. We're gonna start with the frozen hash browns and we're just gonna put that whole pack in there. And as you can tell, it's kind of hard to do with one hand when I have the camera in the other. Then we're gonna cut the sausage and I cut mine into halves. You can cut it as small or as thick as you would like. Then we're gonna go in, I think it was one and a quarter cup of milk. I just kind of eyeball this to make sure there was enough liquid sitting in there. So the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and open up our can of cheddar cheese soup. And I will say this is really hard to find right now. And I was trying to shop for it around Thanksgiving, so maybe that's what it was and it's easier to find now. But what we're gonna do is just put that whole thing in here. And then what we're gonna do is get everything stirred up. So I'm gonna actually like stir a little bit and then you'll see it all stirred up here in a little bit. And we're gonna add salt and pepper to this as well. I forgot about it completely. But salt and pepper, I could have actually used a little more. I just kind of eyeball that as well. Then we're going to get everything mixed in and we're going to pop that lid on. I ended up cooking ours for eight hours on low, but of course you can do four hours on high. But since I started it so early in the morning, I had time to cook it on low. So here's what everything looks like all combined. And like I said, we're just gonna put this lid on and let it cook on low for eight hours. Here's what it looks like after eight hours. As you can tell, it really cooked down, especially those potatoes. But I like our potatoes to be a little softer. So this turned out exactly how we wanted it and it was delicious. So the next thing we're gonna do is like a Mississippi pot roast. So I've got our chuck roast here, and we actually got this from a local meat market. One pack of ranch, one pack of gravy mix. The butter, again, don't come for me. This is what we got, and this is what we afford. And then actually, I uh, got everything from Aldi, and the only thing I could find close enough was the banana pepper rings. And we've made it like this before, and it actually turned out really good. So what I did is I went ahead and put that roast in the bottom and sprinkled both the ranch and the brown gravy packets. And then it calls for one stick of butter, so I had to make do with what I had. Then we add about a quarter cup of the pepper juice and then put some pepper rings on top. And we're going to put this on low, I think. Yep, I did low. And we're going to put that lid on. And I just kind of watched this as far as the time. It did take maybe five, six hours. So here's what it looked like when I was ready to start making the potatoes. And we just did the instant mashed potatoes because those are the easiest for us to use. So now we're ready to assemble our plate. So we've got our meat and we've got the potatoes. So I just put the potatoes down and then the meat. And I don't like a whole lot of this. Just pot roast is not my favorite, but it still turned out good and Tater really likes it. Next, we're gonna do a real simple meal. And I actually saw these croissants on the Walmart website and I was like, those would be really good with like some sub sandwich type things. So that's what we got. And then I got just some ham to go with it. I'm not crazy about many other sandwich meats. We got romaine hearts for the lettuce, some tomatoes, I'm gonna be the only one that uses those. This cheese, I actually didn't order the reduced fat, so I think somebody made a mistake, but we'll still eat it anyway. The mayonnaise and mustard. And then we also had chips and dip on the side. So I started with cutting these in half. I did use a serrated knife for this, and they still kinda, you can tell, fell apart a little bit, but we made it work, so it's okay. So then what we're gonna do is go ahead and add the ham, and I did end up doing two slices on each. So what I did is I actually had where the folded side was on different sides there, just to kind of make it a little beefier and hold up a little better. So then what I'm gonna do is go in and just put a slice of cheese on each piece of sandwich. Next, I cut up just a little bit of lettuce and I really mean a little bit. And I'm just gonna put some on each slice. Now this one, I was able to put just like one little piece on there. And then some of them I had to piece together the lettuce, like this one, you'll see. I had to put a couple, and I think on this next one, I had to put more than just a couple. So I just kind of used what we had. The lettuce is not looking the best anymore since we're getting into winter. 
So we just made do with what we had. Now, like I said earlier, I did get tomato, but only I'm going to put tomato on here. Every now and then, Tater will eat tomato, but this time it was just me. But I really like tomato on sandwiches like this. It really elevates it. I went ahead and put the mayonnaise on each top, and then I went in with the mustard. I wasn't going to try to film the mayonnaise, because I needed two hands to kind of pick that up and hold it together, and then with the knife as well. And I wasn't going to call Tater in here just to do the mayonnaise part, so I just finished all these sandwiches all at one time. And like I said, I just didn't film it and I just put the mustard on. So after I got all this mustard, mayonnaise, and all the toppings and all, we plated everything. I did do two sandwiches each because they were kind of small even though they look a little bigger. So we've got the sandwiches with everything loaded. This one's mine because it's got the tomato and all on it. Then we had the chips and dip and some leftover cake balls from the last video that I posted. So tonight we just wanted a real easy meal and I wanted to try these pizzas out. The one on the left is obviously great value, so it came from Walmart. This is the wood-fired pizza, Bianca. I also call it a white pizza, and here you can see what all it's got on it, different cheeses, and then the basil. And then this is actually from Aldi with the Mama Cozies. And this is their Holiday Star pizza, and it's also cheeses with red and green bell peppers. I didn't think about it before. I should have showed you guys when they were frozen. But here's that Bianca pizza from Walmart after it was done. And I think it might have been my favorite over the Star the star was good. As you can see, all of the mozzarella was kind of on one side and it was so frozen I couldn't even move it. So I don't know if I'd get this one again, but that Bianca one, like I said, I also call a white pizza, was pretty good. So I actually ended up just getting more slices of it and I think I got one slice in total because I did go back for another piece or two of that Bianca one after this. But it was still good and I would recommend. I hope y'all enjoyed these recipes. Leave me a comment down below if you've ever tried these or which one you're most excited to try. Like I said before, if you're new to our family, we'd love to have you subscribe. Leave me a comment down below and like this video. Y'all have a great week.